play, you play the German doctor. How was yeah. your, uh, your research about the role? Well, uh, basically I read the script uh, and uh, later on, I mean, I read as much as we could take uh, around uh, around these characters and, uh, and um, I mean, th these things are written by people who had poli political agendas, so uh, they, we, whether we know it's true or not, we will never find out, so um, I was just trying to do the character that it was in the script. Uh, how was playing with Alicia, because she's much younger than you? Yeah. And then you, you in, in, involved in the romantic affair? Yes, yes. Uh, it made me feel older, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, but I mean, both of them, uh, Alicia and Mikkel, are fantastic actors and they approach their characters with a great, great professionalism. Thank you so much, I won't keep you any longer, this okay, is so thank cool. You. Thank you. Thank you. Mats, 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 there's nothing wrong with a hand, I've just been getting right. extra attention and sympathy and all the rest of it. This is someone else who's like. Are you good? No? Yeah, Ronnie. Oh. Um, so, congratulations on the film, buddy. Fantastic. I'm very serious. So, uh, so, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty used to play other kind of characters and, and uh, not like baddies all the time. So, was it, was it fun? Was it, was it nice to play a, a much more a softer character? Well, everything is nice. Uh, with an audience, you can feel their reaction, exactly. how they receive it and stuff. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, it's something about Matt's as well, because Matt's is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. He's brilliant, I love him and everything he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. I chose him because I was a fan. It's so simple, and 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 because I had never sort of had a part for him before in any of my other films, and I just thought, okay, this one, I have to ask him for this. We didn't really know each other. I said, I called him up. I said, would you read the script? And he did, and he said yes immediately. It was sort of a, like a very nice story, <laughs> very good for me and for the film. And and so I, I always felt that he had not been cast in sort of the romantic lead as much as he could have. I feel he has really like a romantic and a very warm side to him and he usually gets cast as a quite a dark character or maybe action type character and I thought it would be nice for him to sort of stretch these you know muscles as well. Um, I mean there are so many great scenes in the fiction of him mm -hmm. how, how much of that was your, was your impression of him or your interpretation of him and how much could be held into it? Where, where I think it was a 50-50 situation. I mean, we, we worked so hard together and we were really talking about it and rehearsing and playing with it. I always gave him enough room to sort of uh, improvise and do all his, uh, a lot of his, the funny sort of ideas and, and sort of small ticks he has are definitely Mikkels. And then sort of, uh, but the, the, the way he sort of progresses through the film, I would say that's about 50-50. I was really nervous about Swedes talking Danish. I know it's difficult, but you really delivered on that. H how did you do that, and how difficult was it really? Uh, well, uh, I think it's, it's been, um, he's been conceived in many different ways in Denmark. I mean, obviously, right after his death, Strunze, uh, he was a bad guy. Uh, history was, was written by somebody who was not on his side, definitely. Uh, the later years, there's been a lot of books about this theme, and uh, and the love story has uh, has appealed to a lot of people, and and, and seen in the um, enlightening light. Uh, obviously, it, it, this is a good thing. So all of a sudden, he's a hero. Uh, in my eyes, he's an idealist. Uh, he's a man who, who can lean back and be idealist without being what we call a a man who wants to change the world. He can go on, you know, do his work as a doctor, but all of a sudden, he gets this chance. To, you know, climb the social ladder a little, and, and there he is. And uh, so why should people whisper the king in the ear if he has better things to whisper? And uh, so he's just one of many people who starts out like an idealist, and it takes over, and all of a sudden he's behaving like the people he was fighting before. Uh, it's a very human development of the story. It's, it's what all good dictators do, and what all good idealists do. So I, I, I see him as a, a very human character. His weaknesses are very clear. Uh, and, and I really like him for that. Um, about the Danish, well, I, when I first uh, went, went to my first casting, I didn't understand Danish at all. And, um, well, I went to Denmark for two months, and I, I mean, I tried to convince the producers, Nikolai, that I could do this in two months, even though I had you know, such a difficulty to understand him actually when the day he gave me the part. 
Um, well, and I'm just glad. I, I just came back um, a couple of weeks ago when they finished the ADR and Nikolai turned to me and said they had looked again at the first audition <laughs> when I had, you know, actually learned all the lines via an iPhone recorder. <laughs> um, and he said I had improved, so, well, that was <laughs> journey. <laughs> Are you expecting an answer from me as well? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm also Swedish, for those of you who didn't know that. And actually, there's one more Swede. He's down there. But I don't know if you noticed that, <laughs> because he's so good in Danish, as I am. <laughs> so, well, I grew up in Denmark. I don't consider myself Swedish in this film. But maybe you did, though. I, I don't know. I, uh, did I come across as Swedish, Nikolai, to you? Yes, very much so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought I was bilingual. Uh, so, no, I don't know how to... I'm, that would be the, my life story then. To it. I mean, I, I grew up and lived all my life in Copenhagen and I, I act in Danish, I speak in Danish. A little story about how, how Struensö is perceived though, uh, for anybody who chooses to go to Copenhagen, there are a couple of streets named after the, some of these guys. There is a Struensögel, and there is a Ranshausgel, and there is a Gulbergsgel. And I would say, by far, the lousiest street is Struensögel, <laughs> and, and the, be the coolest street is Gulbergsgel. My street. Uh, when I, I used to steal apples there. You, know, <laughs> you used to steal apples I used apples to steal there. apples on your street. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. I used to walk my dog on yeah. your street. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more questions? I feel like to play a German in a Danish movie, and um, what does it feel like coming to Berlin with it? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I'm really grateful that we can, we can come to Berlin. I think Berlin uh, has been a... a, a a very important festival for Danish films during the last maybe 20 years uh, since Denmark was placed on the map. I think that, that, that the Berlinale has been uh, very, very strong, uh, uh, beneficial for us. Uh, being a German in the film, I don't think I'm acting that German. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I mean, the, the, he's in a, he is in a, um, in a Danish province uh, and... and uh, and everybody was supposed to speak French or German or Latin in, in the court, uh, so but we ended up speaking Danish, all of us. Uh, so I did not actually, you know, uh, put my mind to being I'm specifically German. I was just trying to be this guy who is uh, in love with the Enlightenment theory, and and uh, so so that was just another character. And the nationality was not a specific uh, love story for me, but I love being German, though. <laughs> we quote you, so. How difficult it was for you with this new type of role, this new type of uh, movie, new feelings, new ideas, new... Thank you. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure it's uh, that different from uh, any other characters I've ever played. It's the same? No, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's, I mean, I approach a film the same way always. Uh, I try to understand what's inside the head of the director and, uh, and what's, what's in the script. And, and in many ways it was easy because I've rarely seen a period film or what we call a costume film uh, that, that kind of awoke any feelings in me. But when I was reading the script, I, I got really, really moved by reading, just reading it. And then I was just imagining when we would put some blood and flesh into it as well. I mean, we can't be all wrong. Uh, and then meeting Nikolai, uh, it, it, it's never easy to make a film. There's a lot of choices to make, but but I think Nikolai created a universe where we were allowed to, to be intimate with this kind of a, a period film, which is, I, in, in my world, is pretty rare. Thank you. So welcome to the press conference of the movie The Royal Affair, in this case, competition. I'm going to introduce our, our guests to you, starting from the very left. This is the producer, Louise Vett. Welcome. I think if not, we're just happy anyway because we are getting so much per press on this film now, so it's fantastic. It's great recognition for a team effort, basically. It is, yeah. Who in particular do you think you need to have a special mention for in uh, the staff in that level? Well, we've got to mention the director, Ni Nikolai. Uh, he's, he was, um, he's been very really fantastic on this film. He had a firm grip on everything from, from, from the visual look to the, the way he wanted us to act, and he was very on top, and, and all my fellow actors, of course. Are you a very competitive man? Are you, are you secretly rooting for yourself to win or are you sort of sitting back? I've been, I've been signing like 10,000 papers today. Math, math, math. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm pleased, I'm happy to be here and uh, yeah, I would gladly see somebody else get it. If uh, Maybe somebody from my film would be nice. Awesome, thank you very much. You're welcome.